Divine Truth Spirit Assistance Giving assistance to people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. In this recording titled Gladys Leonard Corrects Her Ignorance About Her Condition, Mary channels Gladys again, who comes at Jesus' request because he knows that Gladys' prior claim of living in the fifth sphere is untrue, and Jesus discusses with her the reasons why she believed she was in the fifth sphere, and emotions causing a person or spirit to exaggerate their own soul condition. Recorded on the 18th of December 2018 from 11am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Session 2 Hello again everyone, how are you today? Um, Mary and I are here going to do some more channeling. G'day darling, how are Hi, you? Hi darling. <laughs> <laughs> We've been busy this morning. Uh, I've been working on computers since 5am and Mary's been working on uh, volunteer stuff since uh, about the same time. So been, been been pretty busy. So so it's now about 11 o'clock in the morning and we decided we'd do a bit of channeling. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what we'd like to do this time is do a bit of channeling with Gladys again because we feel the last uh, channeling that we did with her, both Mary and I believed that she wasn't being completely open and honest with us about uh, both her, the location of her sphere, where she was living, and also some other matters. And so um, we want to basically try or attempt to have another conversation with her. And while she might not have been completely honest, we're not suggesting that she was dishonest. What we're suggesting is that she believes certain things to be true that uh, that are probably not true, that we could feel that were probably not true. And uh, and Mary felt that during the channeling last time, didn't you, Donna? Yeah. And I also felt that myself as I was talking to her, there was quite a few discrepancies. But because we were talking about the subject of helping people on earth more than helping her yeah. um, and helping the spirit communication with people on earth, um, I sort of let those other issues sort of go. But I do feel it's very important that we correct some things from that first channeling we did with Gladys. So what we would want to do, if, if Gladys is willing, and of course that's going to depend a lot on how humble she is <laughs> as to whether she's willing, to um, have the discussion about what actually happened during our last channeling. So that's what we're attempting to do today, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Hello. Okay, Gladys, how are you? Good, good. That's good. Thanks for coming. No problem. No problem. <laughs> since since our last talk, I have been approached by some of your friends and I've had some discussions about yes. things. So while some of that was quite shocking, <laughs> it's not uh, it's not so shocking now. Yes. So So you had the opportunity. I know that we talked about that a bit in the last few weeks, didn't we, privately? And, and yes. we had the chance over the last few weeks to just mention about what we felt is the discrepancy between the things you were saying and, and what you believed about yourself uh, in comparison to what was actually happening. Yes. So, so perhaps you, would you like to sort of say firstly what, uh, how you were approached about that or was it our discussion that prompted you to investigate a bit more about that? Yes, I would like to point out that I, I, I wasn't uh, consciously dishonest no. about um, my state or my location. Yeah. Um, but I was uh, now I see operating under some false presumptions and and false beliefs. Yes. Yes. That, yes. that you'd obviously had for quite a long time, uh, yes. even probably before you passed. Is that correct? Well, well yes. It, my beliefs on earth certainly influenced my beliefs and understanding about what I was doing and what was happening for, for me in the, in the spirit realms. Yes. So, so what attracted the conversation that you had with um, our spirit friends to talk a bit, a bit, bit more realistically about what was going on? Mm -hmm. what, what attracted that? What, what was the... There were obviously you had a desire to know something that you didn't want to know before. So what caused that change? Uh, I, I suppose I remained watchful of the both of you and I was aware of some, some thoughts that you were having and some discussions that you had between each other about our discussion. And this uh, 
was a little confusing for me, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, as to what you were thinking and feeling. And during our conversation, I understand that I gave the impression that I that I understood a lot about what you are teaching and doing. And through being attracted to your conversations and then um, having to uh, have a question about my own location, really, that it caused me to have a discussion with Rachel, who I know that you both know very well. <laughs> and during that discussion, I became aware of many other things that helped me to see why I felt I even felt a little confused during my conversation with you at the time. Yes. And, and there were moments when I felt I would like to withdraw from that discussion for yes. those reasons. Uh, but Rachel was very kind <laughs> and loving and helped me to understand a lot more about where I am. And also the, the vastness of what it is that you teach and the vastness of the potentials for each of us. I really see now that I've been laboring under a very limited viewpoint yes. until now. It's interesting, isn't it? When we have, uh, when we have certain predispositions in terms of our, the way we think and also the way we feel, it's quite easy to have those predispositions influence what we're hearing, isn't it? So mm -hmm. the, the words are, we think we understand the words that are being said, but because uh, of those predispositions, we match them to we just we just rephrase our predispositions to match what is being said to us yes. and that frequently causes a lot of confusion uh, with regard to growth yes and so while i said that i was in the fifth sphere really in reality i had made five quite substantial progressions mm -hmm. of what i felt were very substantial progressions since my passing to do, some to do with issues that uh, you would probably call morality and love. Yes. Uh, some to do with simply a review of my life on earth and the mistakes that I had made and the relationships that I had had on earth. And each time I went through one of these processes, I did feel a change within myself. And I took, and my, my surroundings. surroundings changed of also. Yep. So all of this... Uh, led me to believe that I was making changes through spheres once I started speaking and hearing of what you were teaching. Uh, I took it to mean that I must be in the fifth sphere. And it is quite easy, isn't it, to, in the spirit world, you do understand when you make changes because mm. you've also got that environmental change yes. that reflects the change. And I suppose um, also our concept of what the spheres are also impacts, doesn't it, upon yes. that uh, sort of idea or concept that, oh, I must now be in a quite a progressed condition. And I, as you would probably know now, I've had many conversations with spirits in the past who have believed themselves to be in higher spheres and only to have, you know, their, them feel some disappointment <laughs> through the truth becoming known. So that mm. that's uh, obviously something that happens very regularly, isn't mm. it, in the spirit world, really. And, and many of your friends, would that be the case that they also felt the same things as yourself with regard to their passing and their condition changes and their improvement in their condition and so forth? Yes, yes, many. Mm. Uh, and many associations that I had on earth, I have continued here. And, and as you know, there, was a, there is a group of us, although we are slightly... Um, disassembled <laughs> at the moment <laughs> yes, yes. to to focus on some of these things that Rachel came and very kindly taught us all about. Mm. Um, but yes, each of us had some false understandings of what was really occurring. And as I said, really the most profound thing for me was to understand how limited my viewpoint was. And really, I, I do feel a little uh, bashful or <laughs> ashamed of how much arrogance I now see that I had about really my progress and my this is what began to happen for me during our discussion I began to feel that while I had thought that I could have a great impact and a great level of assistance to mediums on earth I suddenly felt that perhaps it was beyond my scope and I wasn't really sure why um, Rachel has helped me to understand a lot more about that but I could see I was grappling with many of the things that you had uh, 
mentioned. And that's what it felt like during the conversation and that's why I sort of laboured some of those things a bit more than perhaps I would have normally. But if we look at, uh, I, I, I probably want to just ask you a few questions about some different things and we need to clarify some tr actual truths from our first discussion just for the sake of our listeners so they don't get the wrong impression about, you know, uh, because I think this is very good for our listeners because many of them do believe they're in good condition when obviously the way God assesses things and God's laws assess things are very different to our personal assessment of things. Mm. And so we need, I think this is a good thing for, to discuss. Uh, the second thing I'd like to talk a bit about uh, is your book, because I've now had the opportunity to read almost all of it now. So, so I've had the opportunity to, uh, you know, examine the mediumship that you conducted on Earth and, and all the different types of um, spirit interactions that you had while on Earth. And so I feel that it's, uh, it gives us a good opportunity now perhaps to even discuss a little bit about what was happening there as well now that you're armed with a bit more information yourself. Because I can see that many of the spirits that you were interacting with on Earth were spirits who, are in a, who were in a similar condition to yourself on Earth, but they were in the spirit world. And hence there was a, ver there was a fair bit of limitation in the potential of those interactions. Um, so, so I'd just like to talk about that a little bit, if that's all right with you. Certainly. I feel that there is still a lot that I am learning sure. about mediumship now. Yeah, no, I understand that. And so let's go to correcting the truths first. In the first discussion we had, you mentioned that you felt you passed into the second sphere of the spirit world when you first arrived. Mm. Now, when you look at it now, with, armed with the knowledge that you've had through the discussion with Rachel, what sphere do you feel you arrived in now? Into the first sphere. Into the first sphere. And, and where in the first sphere did you arrive? Well, I'm not sure how to answer that now <laughs> because I had associated all of the locations with spheres. Perhaps we could say in the second sphere of the first sphere. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, okay, well, but I wasn't in a, a terribly terrible situation. Yeah, so this is what we want to do is describe the locale a bit, if, you, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. To be honest, it was very similar in many ways to Earth. Okay, so similar condition mm -hmm. and, uh, and you had some friends around you at the time? Yes, and yes. family members yep. who, who uh, greeted me and were very warm with me and helped me to climb to where I was. Uh, and... As I said, I was then assisted very kindly through various lessons by some of my ancestors and other people who came and went, uh, who helped me to see various aspects of my own uh, immorality on earth and uh, various misconceptions that I had had. And for me, that was quite life altering. Uh, in a sense, or, or quite altering internally, I learnt what I thought was a vast number of things and my location did change somewhat and became brighter. So it felt as though it was much brighter than, than, Earth, than Earth and I felt quite pleased and happy. Uh, yes, and so I made, as I said, about five of those kinds of progressions. Which, and because I had not felt that, um, I had not had strong conceptions of hell, let us say that, I felt that, well, really, perhaps I had entered where most people enter and I had been helped in a very kind way that many other people must be helped and I had made five progressions. So I felt uh, upon hearing you teach that I must indeed be in the, first, the fifth sphere. And looking at the, um, the locale a bit more, if we could, just, and again, a lot of these questions are for the sake of our listeners, so they get some concept of all of them have not been <laughs> to the spirit world at all. So, you know, you, you, you've been there before they have. So this gives us an opportunity to, to help describe some of these things uh, in, the, in the way that the listeners perhaps would be able to better understand and connect with. So. If we, if we look at the first arrival, was it very similar to the home you lived in on Earth and, uh, and, and yes. 
Yes, really. It was quite pleasant. Yeah. It was in it was in a countryside location and um it wasn't small and it wasn't vast mm-hmm. and I as I said I felt quite at ease there within myself. Uh so it it's interesting it's... to look back because one doesn't necessarily uh pay extreme mind to their external circumstance or their external environment if True. they feel yeah. quite at peace and at ease there. Yes. Um yes. It, there is nothing jarring, there is nothing uh overwhelmingly pleasant and so one feels quite at home just like they would if in their earth oh, like our yes. so would it be best i know in your book you described uh, that there was a seaside location that you had to go to for health purposes for yes. your husband's health purposes i think it was and would it be similar to that that you similar kind of a cottage to that size that 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 you went arrived in first yes perhaps yes Perhaps like that. It was more of a countryside location, as I said. Uh, it was somewhat bigger, yep. slightly bigger yep. than that, uh, with higher ceilings. But yes, in general, yes, very similar. And the walls would have been uh, covered with some history of your own and your and your husband's history. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, it's hard to recall, in yeah. fact, but yes. You probably didn't notice much of that at the time, given No. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, well, in hindsight, I suppose that during those lessons and those, uh, it really felt like lessons I was having where people came to help me learn things, uh, perhaps then those things became more evident, but I wasn't consciously aware of them yes. immediately. And... Um, your husband passed uh, before or after you, Fadis? Before. Before. And did you meet him upon passing? Yes, briefly. Well, yes. We, didn't, we didn't spend uh, time together immediately, although we did go through a phase where we did, if that makes sense. And do you spend much time with him now? Uh, not overly. I, I do not feel like we're in a... A romance as such as very, very good friends. And yes. so we do spend time together, but it is not really in this sort of marriage way. And uh, when it comes to your current location in comparison to that first location, obviously you've had five gradients of changes of location mm. during that time. I'm, I'm pleased to say I've made some some smaller additional progress since, since the last then, spoke. Because yes. the awareness is that uh, Rachel would have described to you would have helped you yes, as well. a great deal. It. Yeah, mm. yeah. So since uh, Rachel had a conversation with you, where are you now in, in the spirit world, according to Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the world according to Rachel. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm actually, I'm very... <laughs> quite excited really i'm i'm told that i'm nearing the the progression between the first and second spheres yeah that's wonderful isn't yeah. it so you're now at the spot where in your books you refer to as summerland yeah which... well yes i suppose i didn't understand that either yeah yeah and it was interesting when you were when i was reading your books and and you were describing summerland you know to to your audience and i was thinking um you know and I think you were in the books referring to it as the third sphere of the spirit world at the time. And I was thinking, no, no, this is Summerland and this is in the top of the first sphere. <laughs> so um, it, was, it, it was good to get some correlation there, I feel, mm-hmm. in terms of what you're stating in your book and the different places that I, you did sort of visit, didn't you, in, this, in your state on earth as you were doing different mediumship. I know yes. different spirits helped you go to specific locations in the mm-hmm. spirit world. And... Um, and obviously, all of those locations, as you would see it now, would probably be would probably in the first sphere of the spirit world. Mm. But but you could see that the higher places that were brighter and and more lovelier, mm. <laughs> um, obviously you interpreted them to be at the time. And you're from your own understanding on Earth, you interpreted them to be in higher locations in the mm. spirit world. Mm. Yes, and I can say now because uh, Rachel has helped me with this that really I was in the 
mid to slightly upper section of the first sphere yes when i passed so it was quite pleasant um and in terms of my housing it was quite pleasant now that i'm i'm being assisted to recall some things mm -hmm. now and it was bigger than the seaside cottage uh as i said not a mansion by any means but not a cottage either there was some some spaciousness yes yeah. And uh, and in comparing those particular things now, you get to see, I suppose, in some ways, get to see the extent of God's generosity mm. in a way, don't you? Mm. Because it's sort of like even the top of the first sphere of the spirit world is so like beautiful in comparison to what you're used to on earth. Yes. Um, and then it gives you some idea, well, if there's a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh and, and, and so many other spheres uh, beyond that, it gets, it's hard to imagine at this point for yourself, isn't it? Hard to imagine what the other spheres and how yes. beautiful they might be. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, so... and, and this is what I refer to in terms of the vastness. Mm. I can see now also that I've been really quite simple-minded in terms of I've seen things really in ways that are very, um, well, I suppose limited is the best way that I know to say it. But uh, I've also seen that I've really remained very estranged from God. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I am consciously aware now that I have some fear surrounding uh, this way that you are speaking about. Um, fear relating to God and really the, the vastness of the potentials that are available to us. For some reason, I feel quite um, some trepidation about that. And I can see now that I've wanted to cling to a very simplistic viewpoint of what may be possible. And really many of the themes and ideas that I had in my earth life have brought me some kind of comfort here. Mm -hmm. And it has been strange and unnerving to challenge those. Yes, yes. The, the second thing I'd like to raise with you about your uh, way of interpreting your life in the spirit world, I suppose you could say it, couldn't you? Is it like you've been interpreting it a certain way compared to what the reality is. Yes. And, and I feel that a lot of mediums do this. People, and I don't know if you've noticed this uh, when you notice mediums passing, but frequently it seems that people who have had a large amount of communication with spirits on the other side while they're on earth and frequently pass with these concepts or conceptions within them that make them feel that everything is a lot better than it, it really could be. Yes, and I think there's a number of reasons for that. Mm -hmm. I have given some thought to that uh, since our last discussion. Uh, in general, I feel because there is already an established faith within the medium that such a world exists, uh, it is not shocking when one arrives. And be But because of that, I suppose belief systems are not challenged in the way that for many others I see that they are. And because there's no challenge to the belief system, there is a tendency to rely on the belief system that was established on Earth. As if uh, in, it is truth, like the full truth. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and that uh, spirit, uh, spirit messages and impressions given to the medium when on earth have really conveyed most of the truth about what is now occurring and provide almost guideposts for the, the now spirit, uh, the medium who is mm -hmm. now entering this life, uh, to interpret things. But... There is an additional thing. I'm sorry, I just lost her for a minute when you said something, so I just have to... Um... For some reason, we don't seem to have excellent rapport. I don't know. So just, uh, just a second. I don't... Perhaps we can deal with the rapport issue 
straight away because this will help the conversation flow a bit a little bit better and my feeling is that the rapport issue is is getting affected a bit by by yourself Gladys in the sense that you're finding it difficult emotionally to openly disclose what you now know to be true but you still feel uncomfortable with being completely humble about that it seems to me and and what I would probably like to do is to just to talk a little bit more about uh, the willingness, I suppose, to just be open to new concepts and ideas without shutting down the emotional response to those particular things. Um, because, because it feels to me that when you're getting challenged with regard to what are your current belief systems, and, and during this conversation we possibly might even challenge a few more of those, um, the key is to not uh, get to, too wound up about that, you know, just to let that conversation flow if possible, uh, rather than trying to portray a state of, you know, of yourself that where, where you're trying to hold on to your own uh, cor concept of yourself in, in order to... The purpose of this discussion is not to uh, harm you in any way or denigrate you in any way in, in, in you know, to the to our listeners or for yourself, but rather just to establish what the truth is about particular things. Yeah, I feel for her she's um, so, yeah, I agree, there's, there's this cringy feeling about exposing things that she's now seen mm. in a public way and that's why she gives me a big download of information and I've just got to get it out because she's doesn't want to stay connected even to what what she's saying because it's cringy for her. Uh, and also I feel this other feeling while you're talking about that is that she feels she's going to lose the respect of mediums on earth, you know, because uh, she... So there's, this, there's but, this thing going on about that. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but what I'm trying to do here is show that this is what I see as a bit of a problem with mediums on earth is they all respect each other to a degree and they all believe themselves to be of a certain developmental condition uh, and usually they believe themselves to be of an ex a developmental condition that exceeds the condition of the average person because they can do mediumship, because they can communicate with spirits. Mm. Which was the, that was the second thing that she was going to say that she had told me but withdrew from mm. me saying was about the that's I can't remember what your question was but something about mediums having an inflated sense of their own spiritual condition uh, when they enter the spirit life makes them less humble to understanding where they are or something well I don't feel it's just that they have an inflated sense of their spiritual condition um, there are I feel a number of contributing factors and this is one thing I'd like to explore with her because um, okay, so let, let, I think I think we're back. So yeah. let me just try and, and I feel I feel properly. in the discussion and I can feel <laughs> her pretty well. I can feel in the discussion the key is to just explore these particular things rather than get too complicated about that what is what was going on for herself because what was going on for herself on earth and also in her passing is exactly what will go on for almost every medium who does pass from the earth. And, and this is something that if by having this discussion, we have the potential to help people who are already mediums to actually start looking at um, their current limitations in a different way and, and maybe start developing in such a way that will improve their conditions so that they don't have to go through the same experience that Gladys herself has gone through. So perhaps I could make my second point. I've heard sure. what you had to say there. Yeah. One thing that I feel affected me greatly when I entered the spirit world was the the impressions that I had been given through my mediumship that I was more, for example, that I had done some work to to examine my spiritual condition before I entered the spirit life. And because of that, I've, I then had assumed that 
by doing differently on earth, I had altered my condition greatly. And in some ways I had altered my condition before I entered the spirit life because I had some feedback from spirits while on earth about some problems that I had, some some darkening in my condition. And so because I had done things to remedy that somewhat, I really thought that I was more developed than I was, if, if that makes sense. Yes, and, that, and that's probably what I'd like to talk about a little bit, because it relates to your book. Because in your book, you describe this time period where the spirits sort of shocked you a little bit by, by taking you to see your spirit body in its condition at the time. And, uh, and then and, and it was all in a sort of a, quite a dark brown type of a condition, which, which you yourself in seeing that, as you wrote in your book, were, were, you were quite shocked about that. And um, I feel I, I, I'm just interested in the spirits who helped you do that compared to the spirits who were normally communicating with you. Mm. Because I think now you can see that there were yes. a different group of spirits that yes, I can. <laughs> you were, they were doing these things. I can. And I'd probably like to talk to you a bit about that, how one group of spirits was just involved in this day-to-day evidential type of mediumship with you without really caring very much about your condition uh, and how that condition might have been affecting the communication or even their own condition. They weren't even really focused on developing their own condition. And so they weren't looking at even helping you do help you with yours. But then there was this second group of spirits who were observing all of these particular things going on and wondering how they can help Gladys while she was on Earth. And I'm just wondering if you've now met them, that second group of spirits who were trying to help you through that process of seeing some things about yourself that you weren't seeing prior to that point? The sad fact is that I've only yet come to um, see and meet them again since our last discussion. And this was enabled by Rachel. And it's quite a strange thing. There's, it's almost there's a different calibre or quality to what I now understand to be spirits who are more interested in the uh, the love within an individual and the condition of the individual, as you would call it, and, and helping a person to alter that in yeah. a positive sense. And interested in the certain... happiness of your life as well, weren't they? Yes. Yes. Yes have a certain quality about them and um, I'm meeting more and more of them now. I can see that those uh, early lessons that I went through to reach what I thought was the fifth sphere, because in reality I did that fairly rapidly, um, I can see now that they had some of these qualities, but I was quite hardened to those qualities in another at that time. I was grateful for their assistance, but I really didn't have the sensitivity to discern that quality within them. And it was only upon reaching, uh, meeting Rachel, who has such qualities developed to such a high degree that I was quite overwhelmed uh, when she gave me a glimpse of herself, her Mm. condition, that... um, I came to now feel a new sensitivity to those spirits who are uh, altruistic, perhaps is the right word, mm-hmm. or those who are really sincerely wishing to to serve and assist others, and those who I had been uh, keeping company with, if you like, um, while on earth and even in our group. I can see that in our group we had quite a lot of um, fascination with the uh, phenomenon of that uh, many of us had engaged in while on earth and, and continued this interest of, of the, the capacity to communicate between worlds. And so while none of us was in a particularly uh, negative state wishing, or even those spirits I see now who I dealt with while on earth, were not particularly uh, malicious. No. Uh, no. But they're... they're f- their feelings and ideas were very much about fascination with the phenomenon and helping people to understand that it was real. And at times there was a little showing off and at times there was uh, just fun and games. 
And sometimes I too noticed that there were some times where they did overstep the boundaries of love a bit and <laughs> yes. cause some problems. <laughs> yes, and I feel there's there's more, much more work for me to do to understand that fully. Mm. The the uh, the finer points of of how I have uh, in fact harmed the. Uh, harmed the understanding of m what I called my craft or my ability when on earth mm -hmm. because this is another thing that affects many mediums when they enter the spirit life is what other what spirits have told them and and sometimes those spirits do meet them also when they enter and uh, so there can be a fostering and an ongoing uh, uh, continuation of some false beliefs and many times the spirits who are meeting the medium are labouring much as I was under some false assumptions. Yeah. Uh, as yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and it's not unique to mediums though. If if we look at if we look at that um, with regard to Christianity or the Muslim faith or other faiths that are on earth, we can see that a similar thing really goes on with every belief system, does it? Even for scientists who are atheists, it <laughs> goes on in that in that faith, if we could call it that as well. Because it because every person has an attraction mm -hmm. that then causes certain spirits to come to them as soon as they pass, and those spirits frequently are there only to support the belief systems that they encouraged while the person was on earth, rather than actually to find the truth about a certain matter. And so I feel that this is not unique to mediums, but there are some things that are a bit unique to mediums compared to other faiths, in that it, with mediums there's often a bit more knowledge about the spirit world and what goes on the possibilities, I suppose you could say, of the interaction between the spirit world and the earth. And so because of that extra knowledge, quite frequently that is an influence on the medium and their, their thought that they maybe don't have to investigate much more mm. once they arrive in the spirit world. Yes, it's, it's, as I've learned, it's easy to find affirmation for your assumptions uh, if you are seeking them. Of course. <laughs> and so I find this very fascinating also now that the earth, the earth world, as it were, is a very powerful place to instigate or trigger change within the spirit life. Because were it not for Mary beginning to read my book, which I noticed she hasn't finished, yes. <laughs> uh, I would not have really even paid much mind to speaking with you and I would have continued to um, believe I understood what you were on about and and our group would have continued to feel that we knew most of what was needed and that simply we would like to, we knew most of what was needed to know about this life and we would really just like to help more people on earth to understand more about this life uh, without seeing our own um, limitations or incapacities really and so I can see now through my own example what a what an interesting thing it is that because as you say many of us here uh, seek confirmation for our assumptions and are rarely challenged unless we seek a challenge in some way this earth life, which we, many of us, still are very fascinated by and attracted to, uh, can cause us to, to um, see new things or see things in a different way. Mm, yeah. And, that, and that, it's good in that way, isn't it, how, in some ways, because you can see how God is still, if, if, we're, if we leave the earth life, but we're still really so attracted to it, 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 there's still attractions going on that help us come to the, some awareness yes. about the problems associated with that. Yes, and I must say that um, prior to these changes and my discussion with Rachel, my largest thought was that spirits could help mediums on earth. And now I see that many mediums may help spirits. Exactly. It's exactly. quite, uh, the tables have turned. <laughs> because, it, because it depends, doesn't it, on the condition of the person as to how they're going to react with the other person. And that's, mm -hmm. and also their knowledge, of course. So. And also, may I say that 
when I was doing mediumship on earth, we had almost a reverence for the spirits and mm -hmm. a feeling that they must know everything and be quite uh, knowledgeable. And I suppose we um, thought ourselves to be lesser because we couldn't, d lesser in knowledge yes. or perhaps development than they were. And now I see how much of a damaging assumption that was because spirits are really just like people and uh, in the same ways that we err and uh, sin on earth, we do seem to do here. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so one mustn't make the quick assumption that a spirit is necessarily... Um... I had some awareness that not all spirits were acting for one's best interest, but I saw it in a very polarised view. Like a evil demon versus... And then an angel almost yes, type of concept. Yes, someone yeah. with malevolence uh, versus someone who must know and love. And and I had a strong emphasis on family matters, as, as many uh, mediums do, uh, because many of us here do also. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And, then, and this gets down to a lot about associations, doesn't it? Uh, if we could talk about that for a little bit. You were spending a lot of your associations with spirits but not really understanding the condition the spirits were in that you were associating with. No. Um, and that was due to the lack of sensitivity that existed within yourself, but also due to the lack of sensitivity that existed in those spirits. Mm. They, they did not know their own condition and the reasons for their own attractions to yourself at the time either. So, Just as I see I was now. Yes, yeah. So it's very interesting yeah. how it works together, isn't it, in terms of and it can it can help us understand why there is so much as first fear influence upon the earth because of the condition of people on earth matching very closely the condition of the spirits that they're interacting with interacting with and one only needs to be slightly more developed for it to be an overwhelming experience for the person on earth who yes. is slightly less developed yes mm. and vice versa actually it can also yes. uh, you know there's obviously spirits what I noticed uh, throughout your book, and I notice this throughout many books written by mediums, is there is a definite fear and also uh, like almost this feeling of any person who's in a lower condition as a spirit, we're just going to dismiss them out of hand or completely because they're just wanting to be there. Uh, there's no sort of desire to help the spirit in a darker condition by the medium on earth. Mm -hmm. There's very little of that actually occurring either. It's a quite a it's quite a tragedy, really, isn't it? it is, that yeah. So many are suffering and yet uh, so feared on earth. That's right, and 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 a lot of mediums almost lead that fear in some yes. regards because they all all their books explain you've got to start but stay away from these dark spirits and protect yourself with the light and all of these other things they keep saying. And when really I sort of see a lot of these interactions as very beneficial to those spirits who who you could actually assist as long as you yourself on earth understand how to assist them, of course. Well, mm -hmm. yes, and one must have this quality that I see in Rachel and then in my other, what I now understand to be my guide, this altruistic quality if that and desire to, to ease suffering, if that exists within the medium. And while I know many mediums feel that that is exactly what they do, there is still a tendency, in terms of easing the suffering for people on earth, Yes. but there is still a tendency to neglect. I see so many things now. There is still a tendency to neglect um, those who are suffering uh, who have passed. And particularly those who are suffering who are still a bit angry or malevolent about their suffering. It's very, uh, you know, there's a definite feeling of we've got to stay away from them rather than, no, we have the potential to be able to help them if we, if we do it correctly. There is a great deal of fear, isn't there? Mm. Mm. Mm, great deal. And it, it, it seems to me that many mediums on earth get involved in mediumship, sometimes because of their fear as yes, well. Yes. Uh, and that is interesting in itself because we, when we analyse other, if we could call it belief systems or religious faiths on earth, you see the same thing playing out where there's specific fears. So, so for example, if a person's got a specific fears with God but still believes in God, then they might be more attracted to some of the mainstream religions like the Muslim or the Christian faith. 
But if they have some fears about God and they don't really care so much about God, but they have some fears about spirits, they might be more attracted to the you know new age concepts that are around about nowadays and so forth. So you see these attractions occurring, and and as a spirit now, you would have the opportunity to see those attractions probably more than what you, you would have saw, saw them as a medium on Earth. Yes, certainly. We have studied that somewhat mm -hmm. uh, in our group. Um, but may I also mention, when I referred to the fear, what I have noticed, and it's become more highlighted to me in recent times, that the fear of the medium's own suffering once they pass, the fear of that being a potential in their future, often causes them to not wish to understand fully mm. the scope of suffering of spirits. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's very true. I've often spoken to people who like to do mediumship on earth or who are people who attend mediums a lot, you know, who, who go to see mediums a lot. And in both cases, there is a definite desire in, in them to, to reject the concept that there are spirits who are suffering. Mm. And yet, as you would know now, there are many billions of spirits who are suffering, yes. both in, in, the, uh, in the condition of being uh, in what we'd call the earth plane, sort of the surrounding the earth condition, but also in the lower realms of the first sphere. And there has been an awakening, can I say, in this since our last discussion, to a sense of compassion within myself. I really did not see how much I was still fearing and judging uh, those people. I was certainly far more aware of them and conscious of their plight since passing, but I can see now also the same feeling of wishing to, while I had um, examined some of my um, pain while on earth, I certainly have not yet even delved into the extent of my own um, what I would call my deepest and darkest, perhaps, that really have only become exposed as I've begun to challenge my beliefs. Mm. It's as if my beliefs were keeping the, um, the door locked on those things. And by having to challenge my beliefs, it seems there's a, a very quiet earthquake happening internally <laughs> where I, I, this is the trepidation that I speak of. Um, of suddenly perhaps there is far more that I need to explore and perhaps far more of my own suffering that I haven't understood or I have been keeping guard of. And so, But I can say that this, I do feel that this is partly what has caused my progression since our last discussion is that I feel a new hard sense, a new, that is all I can really aptly describe it. There is a new sensation here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which feels somewhat like compassion and care for these um, these ones who are suffering. I always thought that I had it, but now I, I feel a difference here. Yeah, yeah. So how now do you feel about um, your own progression now in comparison to the last time we had a talk? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, and you were correct to say that I feel somewhat... Um, uh, exposed discussing it, but uh, let it be said, <laughs> uh, I feel really my progression has been m marginal, I I hardly anything since entering this life. I I do treasure the, the progression that I had made, but as I mentioned as we were beginning discussing things, I I feel somewhat overwhelmed by what I now understand to be the scope of what is possible, but also the scope of what I, I now feel very unsettled internally about I have a growing sense that there is much more that I will need to explore if I am to progress further. And I want this while also feeling frightened. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what I was probably getting at is more the the feelings you have now about progressing, though, so you described one there with just feeling a little bit of trepidation and a bit frightened about seeing some things in yourself now that you probably didn't see before. 
Yes, but I do also uh, feel good about these new feelings yes. that I'm having. Yes. And so there is a... Perhaps it's fair to say that for the first time I feel I am growing a desire to to really love and assist others in this way that that I see in my guides and in Rachel that there is a, a sense that oh, I would like to embody those qualities one day. Um, and I, as I said, I'm still feeling quite in awe and perhaps frightened of God. <laughs> um, but I, I definitely would like to progress mm. beyond where I am. I'm not sure how long it will take me. And as I said, I feel quite overwhelmed by the scope of everything that, uh, not only everything that is impossible, but that is possible, but also what I feel I must do in order to <laughs> make that vast progress. Yeah, yeah. And but it, but it'd be correct to say now that you've sort of when we first met, it didn't feel like you had a very strong desire to actually progress. No, I felt very content where I was. Yes, in, yes, very. And that I see now has been um, my state really since uh, while I since I entered this life. I um, while I was given some very kindly assistance, at which I took and thought yeah. was lovely, and yeah. made some changes. I can see I've never had a burning desire to. Life has not been that dis uncomfortable for yes. me. Um, and I've been di pleasantly diverted through the group uh, where we were studying mediumship and, and trying to assist mediums on earth and uh, having those kinds of connections that I really didn't, um, yes, I, I didn't feel a pull. I still felt I see now a pull towards the earth rather than a pull beyond the condition that I'm in. And... It's, it's another funny thing, isn't it, that I now feel uh, by obeying this pull, it, it, by, by having and allowing this pull. Uh, you mean allowing the one pulling towards the earth? Uh, no, no, or the, the other pull. pull uh, in towards the, progress. Towards progress. Yep. I feel that ultimately I will um, perhaps have less pull but more desire to to do what it was I first said I wanted to do to you yes. and and had no concept of the scope or the real reality of what that is. I yes. see now the importance of, well, each person, be they spirit or medium or other person on earth, um, growing in these ways yes. that I'm beginning to discover. And yeah. that I would love to do yeah. uh, rather than just... Uh, make a show of mediumship or, or to to help people on earth to have faith that this communication is possible. Now I can see already, and I'm quite surprised speaking with you because I, it's, a, it's almost a new desire as yeah. I speak to you, yeah. but to, to assist people to have the, uh, not only the knowledge that this communication is possible, but also the, the importance of uh, what it is to to uh, make progress, as you call it, and what it is to love and how meaningful for me if I could convey some of that to people on earth, the, mm. the, that importance and also some ways perhaps. Because I see that if if each medium on earth had this heart sense that I now have or that perhaps is only just growing in me, of compassion and, and real desire to assist, that perhaps the world could change. Mm. Substantially, I feel. And it, it requires, doesn't it, firstly, this love-based desire, not, not just sort of... A, it, there's a difference, isn't there, between a love-based desire to actually to lo to love and care for people and a desire to just flirt with the phenomenon uh, of things. Yes. And... and I sort of feel in a lot of ways that it, it requires both feelings. Like you want to still flirt with the phenomenon of things because that's quite fascinating. <laughs> well, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and course. I'm a big believer in fun. <laughs> exactly. But, but there is also needing to be driven by two other things. One is that love that drives it. And the second one is the, a passionate desire for the truth of it. 
as well, rather than just to experiment with the effects without understanding the causes of such things. And I feel if, if spirits approach things in that regard and mediums on earth approach things in the same manner, then you'd have a very uh, good situation, you know, where spirits can help the mediums and mediums can grow and then they can also help spirits in a darker condition and so forth. But, but also you get the experimentation with regard to the phenomenon without losing the connection with love and truth about it, mm -hmm. rather than coming up with explanations of the phenomenon that uh, lead people to believe in things like reincarnation and other things that are actually quite harmful to humanity as beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sort of brings me to your beliefs on Earth a little bit, um, if we could discuss them a little. Like your book, you, you do mention some of those beliefs on Earth. You obviously had a belief in some Christian beliefs. Yes. Because you do mention, uh, you know, myself, and you mention God quite a lot and, and so forth. So you've obviously had some uh, Christian faith while you're on Earth. Certainly. I would consider myself a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... What I see now is that what was lacking was really a heart felt feeling about God mm. or a heart felt feeling for Christianity. It was like a framework that and and it's it's interesting, isn't it, to uh, to discover that what you thought was love was really a series of actions and thoughts with some feeling alongside. To, to now awaken to the idea that love is far more and involves far more of a, a literal sensation mm. <laughs> that I feel. Um, and so, so, yes, that's probably what I would say about that, is that I really, uh, that is how I was on earth and this is what I'm now So would it be doing. accurate to say that it was sort of like an intellectual concept that you brought up with, that you had some connection to, but not a true, like, de a developed heartfelt connection to the source of it, like God, God being the source of it. That's correct. Yeah. And it, yes, yes. It wasn't just intellectual. It was guided my actions and my thoughts. And, yes. And, and, but I also noticed that during your book that there was some mention of some people around you having concepts of reincarnation and so forth as belief systems. How, how did you ratify those two almost completely different belief systems at the time. Well, I see that many mediums had operated in a very similar way to myself in regards to this. I really didn't let the, um, how would I put it? I wouldn't let the situation clash within myself. I, I still felt I could be a Christian and entertain some of those ideas. Yes. It wasn't, I didn't have on earth a deep sense of introspection, let us say. Um, not what I understand now. <laughs> As to what you would need to progress type of thing. Yes, and also to, this is what I say about the, the quiet earthquake internally. To really examine one's beliefs is quite, quite a, um, a challenging endeavour. And uh, I had a, I felt I could sort of harbour some beliefs and also others and really not pay much mind to how they were contradictory. <laughs> so really they were ideas. And now I, I, that I was happy to entertain. Um, and now I see that, well, really, um, I have some core beliefs about God, for example, that I still don't feel very comfortable speaking about, but um, they almost contravene some of the thoughts that I had about what I thought were my beliefs about God. So yeah. Yeah. I think there's no real simple answer to that question. Hopefully I helped a little. Well, I suppose what um, I'm getting at here is that we can hold a whole set of intellectual beliefs Oftentimes they are directly contradictory to each other and completely illogical with each other, you know, in terms yes. of their, uh, you know, they, one is almost or the complete opposite sometimes of the other. Yes. We can hold a set of intellectual beliefs 
without really understanding that the emotion that exists within us and our our true soul-based beliefs, if you like, that are driven by our emotions, are really the things driving us all of our day. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yes, that is my experience, certainly. Yeah. And, and I feel that a lot of people who are listening to us also don't get that when you pass, that doesn't change very much. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I hope my example uh, in some way demonstrates that. Yes, I, I think it's a very important demonstration. To, to demonstrate that because there is a big strong concept on earth with most religious faiths and also with you know what we'd classify as spiritualism that as soon as one passes there is this instant knowledge that's available to them that means that they are now they are the knower of all things mm. and and nothing could be further from the truth but it is what most people on earth prefer to believe mm -hmm. that they can remain in ignorance on earth because as soon as they pass all things will become known to them yes. <laughs> without understanding that the lack of desire to uh, develop past the ignorance, the, the desired ignorance, actually causes a desired ignorance in the spirit world as well. And I see this relationship going on quite a lot um, yes. on earth when a person passes and then retaining that same set of desired ignorance when they pass. Yes which slows down their joy and their happiness and their progression and their ability to remove from themselves the hurts that come from their earth life experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's good, Gladys. I think it's good that we've been able to discuss those particular things. Is there anything else you'd like to mention just to clarify from our first discussion uh, for the sake of the people who would be listening to it at some point in the future? We haven't actually got it out yet. But <laughs> we will do. Well, I... I think perhaps it is only fair to say that the rapport wasn't a, a particularly strong during that discussion and so um, there may have been some inconsequential errors um, in terms of accuracy but nothing particularly that I would like to correct at this point. No worries. Would you like to, what, what are your reflections about the, uh, the rapport not being strong at the time? Well, I have been told that I can be quite a forceful personality and I do feel that I came very much with the idea of what I would like to discuss and that I could be in control of the discussion. I'm, I'm far more used to, to uh, people who are speaking with me giving me much more airtime <laughs> and not responding quite as much as yourself. Yes. Um, and so I feel that obviously impacted on, on the rapport. So you felt you sort of stepped back a bit because of that? Yeah, so when I felt um, challenged, well, again, there's a number of reasons. Firstly, because I just wanted to come and tell you what I wanted to know and you tell me. And I wanted also to be able to tell a lot about my own experience and what I thought was important. Uh, and I can see that that perhaps wasn't very honest because I was coming posing a question, but I also had a lot of ideas about what I would like to say. Which and is what we often have, feel happens here on Earth when people ask us questions too. <laughs> well, then I'm not alone. No, not alone. <laughs> uh, um, and, but then beyond that, obviously, I felt very um, challenged by... I felt stirrings of things that I wasn't accustomed to. I wasn't prepared for uh, even your energy, as I would have called it, and how much that would confront things in me, or your words, or your attitude. So mm. <laughs> many of those things affected the rapport. And there's also the issues of Mary's tiredness and um, hydration and all of those things which I do know affect my rapport with every medium. Well, I feel there was one other thing that Mary feels too. Oh, well, yes. She's <laughs> that is probably the most important. Frightened. <laughs> she's she's certainly by far one of the most frightened mediums that I've ever <laughs> yes. um, spoken through. And so. Particularly um, of a person like yourself, because she's had a very overbearing parents herself on earth this life and also in the first century that she's working her way through emotionally to, to work her way through those things. So mm. that, uh, that she finds it very difficult to hold on to a conversation 
with a person that reminds her a bit of her mum. <laughs> it's probably the best way to put it. <laughs> yes, and she, she doesn't have quite the same attitude to what she's doing as most other people that I speak through. Very true. Uh, mm. she, she's more afraid of it than many of them. And, uh, and so I can sense that. Yes. And I also sense how afraid she is of uh, people watching her and her getting things wrong. And that yes. is a bit frustrating, to be honest, yes. as a spirit, because we just want to say what, especially me, I want to say <laughs> what I want to say. <laughs> exactly. And, no um, matter how wrong it is or right, it, is, <laughs> yes. it doesn't matter. <laughs> and she's all worried about herself. And that does get in the way quite a lot. Yes, yeah. So that, that will, Mary will hear that feedback, of course, and that, that will help her as well. So um, with regard to this, uh, have you noticed that most first fear spirits that you've met um, have the same sort of approach to, to mediumship with, with the people that are guiding with mediums on earth? They just want the medium to listen to what they've got to say. <laughs> Many times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been able to observe many occasions of, of mediumship and I do, I do note now and with my growing awareness and Rachel has helped me a lot in these past couple of weeks or however long. Yes, about long, months of our time, I think. To, to understand certain things about what I have been observing. But certainly there are many spirits who are quite forceful Mm-hmm. And many of them are what I would call recently passed, and yes. and they just they choose almost anyone <laughs> to to yes. speak through if they yes. possibly can, uh, because they they're desperate in many ways to have their loved one hear from them. So even a person who doesn't even call themselves a medium often gives a message from a spirit, sometimes unwittingly and sometimes without even the person who's receiving it understanding where it's come, come from. from. Mm-hmm. It just comes out as their own words mm-hmm. and um, the person receiving it must be sensitive to, to understand, oh, that's probably mum or mm-hmm. that's probably dad. Mm-hmm. And many, as you know, many people don't understand that. Then there is the case where there's an established, I wouldn't call it guidance now that I've had the, really the pleasure and honour to meet my own guides now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't really call these people guides anymore, but people who do have a, an established relationship with, with a, um, a medium, sometimes the guides do seem to have some influence. I just didn't understand properly what was happening. It's more of a third party type of influence almost sometimes. Isn't I, it's, it? it seems sort of one removed. Yes. And I, I had come to think that perhaps that was part of their role, not to, not to interject as strongly uh, because of issues of rapport. Yeah. Um, but any, it's more to do with case. love and condition, isn't it, as you would know now? Yes, mm. I'm coming to understand a lot more, which I need to know if I'm going to be of assistance. But, um, yes, when there's established kind of a re- relationship between a, an established medium and someone who helps them, sometimes that is a family member or just another spirit, um, those things are quite hard to break because they're quite conscious on both parts. Although uh, the medium on earth often doesn't understand who it is who is helping them and what their condition is, but they do have a, a, a developed and conscious rapport with that person, and yes. it's very difficult for them to to give up. And even if they don't have a name for that person, that person they have a a sense of that person. Yes. Often, sometimes, they get it confused with their own self, sense of self. Yes, very true. Um, Yes. And so we saw that that quite a lot, and that's that's different a little because there is more of a conscious back and forth or a I'd like to know, here's the information, whereas in that first instance it's far less... uh, it's far less conscious and far less uh, choices involved <laughs> yeah. for people, conscious choice. So you could say that in the first instance, it's almost circumstances allow for the quick communication of some information. Yes. Whereas in the second instance with these mediums who have got close rapport with spirits who they call their guides frequently. Yes. But are not necessarily their guides frequently. That's the case. Um, but they call them their guides because that's who they connect with with the most rapport. Um 
those kind of communications are obviously well established and the bond that gets established usually uh, for many mediums remains their entire life on earth um, mm. until they pass without there being any real progression of the spirit or the medium during mm. that time and sometimes a degradation unfortunately because of the sharing of untruth and so forth it sometimes goes on in that relationship yes and so mm. i do feel very fortunate that i that really uh, it could have been a lot worse for me on earth and also um the intermittent uh, influence that my guides had upon me mm. did greatly uh, help me mm. now. Yeah, so where do they live, your guides? You, you've met them and where, where are they at the moment? I have not asked them. <laughs> They're in the third sphere. Yeah, mm. yeah, wonderful. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's funny even that we don't ask certain questions. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it always that's something that fascinates me a lot how sometimes it seems to me that questions seem so obvious and yet we don't ask them and it's like and this gets back to the start of our conversation i feel how we're often in a state where we're not even aware that we could ask something or or that it would be beneficial to ask that thing are we that's yes and i'm mm. learning quite a lot about my own trepidation <laughs> uh, in that sometimes yeah. it is my fear that is causing me not to to ask a question because i'm continually it seems at the moment overwhelmed by the the next, answers <laughs> yes thing that i learn i feel inadequate and yeah. really minuscule in a lot of ways yeah and, and it's a, it's difficult to it, it requires humility to get through that and mm -hmm. and one thing i keep reminding myself is god being an infinite being no matter what extent of information or knowledge i might have I'm still never going to approach the infinite being. <laughs> so, you yes. know, that helps you sort of, in a lot of ways, keep your place. <laughs> in terms of, or keep some realistic concept of where you are mm. in your own progression. Mm, yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. It seems that everyone has got work to do then. <laughs> yeah, I, I sort of feel that, you know, the way we get to hear God clearly is by, to a large degree, understanding the difference between a limited person uh, you know a limited soul a creation of god and the the infinite nature of god herself mm. and without really understanding that we don't ever really we always have an inflated view of self then mm. um and yeah i suppose having an inflated view of self has always confused me a lot <laughs> because it because it, if someone truly understands the infinite nature of God, there would be no capacity really to have an inflated view of self. Mm. And I find that's an interesting, that's interesting in itself, that, that idea that the inflated view of self comes from an incorrect view of the infinite nature of God, really. Yeah. Not something I have ever considered. Mm. So mm. I, I thank you. I thank you a lot. And mm. Yes. So I'm sure we will speak again. Yes, I, I've enjoyed the reading of your book and uh, in the sense that it was interesting in the sense of being able to connect with the spirits who are actually involved in the, mm -hmm. in the different manifestations of different phenomena that you engaged in while you're on earth. And, and I, I found it interesting just feeling about those spirits and their condition at their time and, and then your interpretation as a group, you know, the, the people you were with and their, all of their interpretation of the condition of those particular spirits and so forth was mm. very interesting comparing, you know. And can I just say that I, and I hope this is not coming from my inflated sense of <laughs> self, but I would like Mary to finish reading that book. <laughs> it is only her fear that is stopping her. Yes, I, I sort of feel the reason why I continued with your book because it, I, th I felt it would be able to help uh, a lot of people on earth actually in some ways because there is a limited concept of the potential uh, types of connections that are possible between the spirit world and earth. And what I found about your book, it's one of the few books I've read about mediumship that discusses the many different potentials. There's a few missed potentials, of course, with the, when it comes to actual moral and, and spiritual truths. Well, many now, yeah, I see. Yeah, yes. but, but when it comes to phenomena proving the, the existence of a spirit world and phenomena proving the interrelationship between the spirit world on earth, I feel your book sort of covered a lot of a wide variety of different phenomena. 
Well, I guess it's evident, and isn't it? You can see evidence for my fascination with yes. this, which has, which has governed my life until very recently, even here. Yeah, yeah. And so I feel in that regard, anybody reading the book, although they'd have to be careful in terms of some of your interpretations of what was going on at the time. Yes, I see now there was some errors and perhaps that's another discussion yeah, we can have. Yeah, that's certainly a discussion we can have for the future. But, but when it comes to the actual phenomena themselves, in terms of a bit of a description of the phenomena and what is possible, this is where I feel Mary has some fears because she doesn't want to know the full extent of what is possible. Or it'd be better and she to say seems she's... hooked on her own inadequacy, really. Oh, of course, but they, they are just emotions that need to be addressed. And as you will see in your future, working through things emotionally is a lot uh, more difficult than considering mm. them just intellectually. Oh, and I suppose I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just pointing out that we need to have compassion for emotional states because that, that is, it is difficult uh, to work through emotional states. And particularly given uh, Mary's and mine and any person of the 14 who have returned in the way that we have. And I don't know if you've learned much about that at this stage, but yeah, there are a lot of different things going on with regard to emotional states that are quite confusing to address. And I feel it's important to have some compassion for that. <laughs> but, but what I'm getting at with regard to your book is that the, the different types of phenomena most, like some mediums, are, as you pointed out in your book, have a gravitation towards one type of phenomena because that is their safety zone, I suppose you could call it. And, but but they are, uh, there's all these other possible phenomena that could, could cause uh, people on Earth to actually have an established, uh, be not belief, but, but faith in the reality of an afterlife. But the medium avoids those particular phenomena because of different fears and other problems that they have emotionally. And, and so what, what I think is good about reading the book um, is that it gives people an idea of the types of phenomena that are possible. And, 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 uh, and you don't see that very often in modern mediumship books. Usually with modern mediumship books, you, you basically just, it's mostly about the communication in terms of the face-to-face -face talking communication or the automatic writing. Um, and, and it doesn't include many of these other potential phenomena that could be occurring. Mm. And, and so I, I, think, I, I feel that the book was quite good in that regard. It demonstrated yes. those particular things. And perhaps that was something that kept me humble also, is that I was just so fascinated and, and I knew I wasn't that good at lots of them. And yeah, so perhaps yeah. that helped me in my my uh, entry to this life as well. But um, I have always been just fascinated by these things. Yeah, and I'm sure your fascination will grow. And also your understanding of how it actually works will grow mm. quite markedly as you work through different matters emotionally, um, as Rachel probably already been explaining to you. Yes, to many degree. things, many yeah. things that I have yet to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It's been very good having a chat with you. Thank, thanks for coming. Uh, I, uh, you know, I was a bit concerned that you might have a, you know, feel ashamed or any of those things. And well, I, I that, certainly do somewhat. <laughs> I, I know, but uh, that's not our point of uh, having the discussion. It was more just a point to clarify with our listeners how it is easy, even as a spirit, to misconceive your own progress and also your own development and your own experiences, just as it is easy for a person on earth to do that as well. And, and I think this will help a lot of people on earth have a bit more of a humble look at their own conception of themselves. As I've spoken, as you might have heard me speak to some people this week about, we've, I've talked a bit about the fantasy that we want to maintain about ourselves. Yes. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's good to see in some ways that, that if you do maintain a fantasy to a degree on earth about yourself, that fantasy is going to continue <laughs> into the spirit it, world unless you indeed. do something about that. Indeed. Yeah. 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 So yeah. thanks for coming, Gladys, and having that conversation. You're very welcome. And I look, for, look forward to hearing about your progress in the future. As you, as you make different strides, you'll 
look back on this conversation and probably feel the same way as you did about our previous yeah. one at some point. <laughs> you know, and I suppose I'll just get used to that. <laughs> that's right. But it is something you have to get used to. It's because it's that's the thing about progress is you look back on yourself at, at the snapshot of what you were and you go, well, I'm sorry, you know, I feel a bit of shame about those things. And um, that's just a part too, isn't it, of growth in some mm. ways, just getting used to that. Um, as I'm coming to see, yes. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. If you, if you talk to Rachel, I'm sure that she's had her moments like that too. <laughs> I, I will. I will ask her. And also my guides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, it's been great that uh, you've come and had a chat, a chat about us and that we could clarify some of those matters with you. Thank you.